Hello everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Oscar. Now today we're going to be talking about parental controls on the iOS device. Now we have here the iOS 11 and then we have iOS 12. I know a lot of parents that have iPads or iPhones for their kids, but for some reason or another, they don't actually dive into the parental control side of it, which has some great features. Now we're going to start off with the older version of iOS, which is going to be iOS 11. So I press on settings and we're going to go to the general settings right here and we're going to find something down the list that says restrictions and you can see it says off and we're just going to click on enable restrictions. Now, even if you don't have a passcode set up, it's going to ask you to set up a passcode. So we're going to make it a simple one. One, two, three, four. Now make sure you remember this passcode because then if you want to re-enable everything again, you're going to need this password. So one, two, three, four, one more time. There we go. Now we're going to make our way down the line and we're going to set it up the easiest way so that you don't have to worry. You can simply hand the iPad over to your kids and not have to worry whether they're doing in-app purchases or they're seeing ads they shouldn't be seeing or watching videos that are not appropriate for them. So we're simply going to, uh, my kids, they can't read or write yet, so I'm going to disable Safari. I'm going to let them have the camera on. They can have fun with that. Siri, they can get a little funny with Siri sometimes, saying naughty words or something like that. So we're just going to disable that for now. FaceTime, I don't know if you guys have kids with iPads playing around with iPads or iPhones, but they love playing with FaceTime and calling you, especially in the middle of a sleepover. So I'm going to hit and disable that for now so that we don't get some random phone calls in the middle of the night or they don't call up people they shouldn't be calling. Um, and they're not gonna be transferring files with each other, so we're gonna turn off our job. Here we have the iTunes Store, Music, iBook Store, Podcast News, installing apps, deleting apps, and in-app purchases. My kids don't need access to any of this stuff, so you're just gonna head and turn all this stuff off. This is really important right here, is installing apps, deleting apps, and in-app purchases. You don't want your kid to accidentally start deleting apps by accident and then delete all the progress that they might have on one of the games, and then you're gonna have a meltdown. So you wanna make sure you turn off deleting apps and installing apps. And in-app purchases, you don't wanna be hit with a random credit card bill at the end of the month because your kid has been downloading all sorts of different games or downloading all sorts of, um, you know, there's a lot of games that make you buy stuff on it. So you wanna make sure you disable that right away because otherwise you could be stuck with a really hefty bill. Now here, we're gonna be moving on more to the content when it comes to TV shows, books, or apps and things of those sort. So we want to make sure that for movies, I like to have my kids just watch PG movies. I don't like to let them see anything else like that. Um, I have a six-year-old and a three-year-old, so a PG movie is just fine for them. Next, we're going to move on to TV shows, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go PG, and it won't show them anything else that's TV 14 or Mature or any of those or that other stuff. So we're going to keep it kid-friendly over here. There's a lot more things that you can do on your restrictions, and you can go through and decide what you want to do with your kids. Um, I find that this settings usually work pretty good for me. Uh, you can take a look here and copy those. And then also at the end, I want to make sure they don't have screen recording because they could fill up the iPad if they accidentally start rec recording the screen. And adding friends, I don't want them adding anybody that I might not know. So I'm going to turn that off as well. Multiplayer games, that might be okay. Uh, it depends on what kind of games your child has installed. Um, but those are pretty much the basics when it comes to your uh, parental controls on the iOS 11. And then we're going to go back here to general. We're going to go back to the front and we're going to see there's a lot of things missing, for example. The iTunes store is gone, the App Store is gone, um, FaceTime is gone, and all we are left with is some of the apps that the kids play with. Now, if we were to go, for example, on an app that my kids like to play here, Bike Race. So here, for example, we're going to go to single player. We're going to go here. We're going to go to the bike shop where the kids like to like try to buy stuff. And we'll see that automatically we're having uh, some of the things uh, disabled. It tells you, oh, great. Why don't you try a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription for a hundred dollars? Now you can go say start now, and then we're going to have a great little warning here that says purchase in that purchases are not allowed. So therefore, you won't have an accidental click from your kids clicking all sorts of buttons and buying something for a hundred dollars or twenty dollars or whatever it might be. And there we are. That's how we do it for the iOS 11. I think it'll be a great help for those people that are trying to just set up an iPad when they go for a trip or they need the kids to have you know some some downtime. They can just give them this and they'll be sure that they're not getting into any content they shouldn't be watching. They won't be buying things they shouldn't be buying uh, and it'll make it easy for you in the long run. Now, when it comes to technology, newer is always better. I don't know if that's the case here on iOS 12. They made some changes that might make it a little bit more difficult, but I'll walk you right through it. So we're gonna go into our settings right here. And if we look under general, like we had it before, 
we look for enable restrictions and we see that it's nowhere to be found. What they introduce in iOS 12 is more meant for everybody's attention span when it comes to using your iOS device is they decided to do something called screen time. And we're gonna see something that says turn on screen time. We're gonna do a simple passcode like we did before. We're gonna do one, two, three, four. And we're gonna see that it turns on and we're gonna see how much time we spend on the iPad. And you're gonna see a whole bunch of different settings here. You can have something called downtime. You can do app limits. I like to control the time that my kids spend on my iPad myself. So I just make sure that I limit that myself. Now, most of the settings that we found on iOS 11, we're gonna find on content and privacy restrictions. So we're gonna go right here. We're gonna enable it. And then we're gonna see some of the same settings that we had before, except that now we don't have the simple sliders that made it much easier before. So now we're gonna go into the iTunes and App Store purchases. In selling apps, we're gonna be like, don't allow. Deleting apps, don't allow. And we're gonna go in app purchases, don't allow. So now we made it so that they don't, they're not deleting apps, installing apps, or buying anything in those apps that might uh, be a headache in the future. Now going back to making things different like they did in iOS 11, in order to restrict some of the access to like Safari and the uh, iTunes Store and the App Store, we're going to have to go into the Allowed App section. Here we're going to see that we have access to Mail, Safari, FaceTime, the Camera, Siri, AirDrop, and CarPlay. We're going to go ahead and disable those, disable the iTunes Store, the podcast, the news. These are things that the kids, they just want to get on an iPad, play some videos, take some photos, play some games, and that's about it. Now, this is a very robust set of uh, restrictions that you can go through. These are some of the ones that I use right now myself. If you can dive into it yourself, you can limit it even more. You can even have a volume control if you don't want them changing volumes or not. Uh, but the one that I want to get into is into content restrictions. This one's going to be the same one that we had before that makes sure that your kid is not watching an R-rated movie or a PG-13 or a TV show that's rated mature. And that's pretty much how I like to set up the settings on my iOS 12 device. If you have any other suggestions that you think might be better, go ahead and shoot my way. So we're gonna go back here, then we're gonna go to a main screen and we're gonna see the things can change quite a bit. We no longer have access to the iTunes store or the app store. And as you can see, we made it simple for our kids to use the iPad. So there you have it. Nice and simple, a quick, easy way to set up the parental controls on your iOS device. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. And until I see you next time, be kind and do good.